words. What an awesome wonder you are. Jesus, what an awesome wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Savior, what an awesome wonder you are. Savior, what an awesome wonder you are. Oh, Savior, oh, Savior, oh, Savior. What a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, what an awesome healer you are. Jesus, what an awesome healer you are. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, what an awesome healer you are. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe, oh, God. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, your way is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, Yahweh, is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, God, oh, God, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, oh God, your name, why is your name? Breathe, Lord, oh God. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Jesus, Jesus, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, oh. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, what well, hey, is your name, breathe, Lord. Oh, God, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. I need you to just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, God. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, well, hey, is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, Yahweh, is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, Yahweh, is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. 
I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, peace, and hope. Oh, God, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, you do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, and awesome is your name, you do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, and awesome is your name. Oh, I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence, oh God. There is joy, peace, and hope. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, and awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, and awesome is your name, awesome is your name. Awesome is your name. Awesome is your name. Awesome is your name. Mighty is your name. Mighty is your name. Mighty is your name. Mighty is your name. Glorious is your name. Mighty is your name. Faithful is your name, healer is your name, mighty is your name, mighty is your name, mighty is your name, mighty is your name, faithful is your name, faithful is your name, faithful is your name. Awesome is your name, oh, awesome is your name, awesome is your name, awesome is your name, Jehovah is your name, Waymaker is your name, Waymaker is your name, Healer is your name, Healer is your name. Healer is your name. Healer is your name. Father 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 is your name, and healer is your name. Hold on.
Amen. Amen. Father is your name. Ela is your name. Restorer is your name. Uh, Father, we want to say thank you uh, this evening. Our Father, our help in time of need, our hope, our inspiration, our help from, from, from ages past. Lord, we worship you. Father, we give you praise tonight. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We reference you, O oh God, and we worship you from the bottom of our hearts. Even as we gather together this evening, you know, at your feet to be taught of you, O oh God, we bless your holy name. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor that is due unto your name. We bless your holy name, Father God. We give you praise, O oh God. Be magnified forever and ever, O oh God. And Lord, even as we go into this time of study, even as we, each and every one of us, come together at your feet to study your word, we pray, O oh God, that you would have your way tonight, O oh God. Lord, we acknowledge your presence, Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Holy Spirit, that you would teach us all things. And we begin to pray tonight, even as we look at stewarding our relationships, O oh God that you would teach us by yourself in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you would open our eyes, open our understanding, even as we begin to look into the, the word of life, oh God, that you will speak to each and every one of us, oh God. And Lord, we pray tonight that you would deposit in us, oh God, a word in season, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, precious Holy Spirit. We give you praise, O oh Father God, for the opportunity to come into your presence, O oh God, one more time, to be blessed of you, O oh God. We give you honor, adoration, O oh God. Be magnified forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen and amen and amen. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Kuku, for that wonderful time uh, of, of worship. Uh, may the Lord continually strengthen and, and replenish you. Uh, the oil of, of and garment of praise upon your life will never run, your, your oil will never run dry. And, and you continually wear that garment of praise and worship. And we, we thank God. So good evening, church. Good evening, everyone. Um, we, we thank God uh, for another day. Uh, the Bible says day to day, you know, his mercies endures. He, he loaded us with benefits on a daily basis. And it's always good to come into his presence, uh, fully aware of, of his blessings upon our lives. And, and that's why we rejoice, we, we, we celebrate, and we are full of thanksgiving. Um, and thank God for bringing us this far as well, um, mindful of time and the season that we are in. Uh, thank God for a new month of June. Uh, so this month of June represents the, the end of, uh, or bring us to the end of the first part of this year. And we thank God for the great things that he has done and that he continues to do. And we, we are really encouraged tonight that we serve a God of times and season. And we trust him as well that even as we go into the month of June, God will begin to hasten our steps. God will begin to, to, to perfect all that concerns us and all that he has in mind for us uh, for this year, 2023. Amen and amen. So, um. We're just going to carry on in the place of, of study uh, to, tonight, and we're going to be looking at um, a, a topic stewarding our relationships. Um, and I would attempt uh, to share my screen real quick, actually, um, just check that I can, I can do that successfully. Um, okay. So hopefully... Um, Am I okay? I just need a thumbs up from somebody tonight. Great. Lovely. Hopefully you can you can uh, see my screen. I'll just make that into a print. We can see we can see your screen. Oh fantastic. Thank you so much for that uh, confirmation. All right. So um as, as you've seen, uh, we're talking about stewarding our relationship, and I know relationships. Uh, is a topic that we've um, covered so much uh, this year. And, and the reason why is, is because it's important to God. It's important to the season that God is taking us into. Uh, as we begin to transition, God is, is pretty much hammering it in us to say, you know, you have 
to be aware of relationships, God ordained relationships. And again, don't, don't, don't get, don't, don't turn off on me. Uh, it's, we trust God that God will open our eyes and, and give us a new dimension uh, tonight uh, as we look into how we, specifically how we steward our relationships. So for tonight, um, we'd look to cover uh, relationships again. Uh, you know, we've talked about relationship in so many respects uh, this year. Uh, but would uh, pretty much just have a quick recap um, and, and maybe agree on, on what relationships are, especially vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the, the time and the season that we are in. Um, the second part will be pretty much uh, stewardship and relationship. Uh, you know, what is a steward? I think uh, Pastor Afis did a wonderful work, so I won't go too much into definition uh, of, of stewardship tonight, but then to begin to bring those two words together. And finally, uh, we just really want to delve as quickly as possible into those practicalities of, of, of how to actually cultivate healthy relationship and how to begin to, to steward our, our relationships um, in, the, in the right directions. Uh, and we trust uh, God for a great uh, and, and wonderful time tonight in, in his presence. Um, I've been really blessed, you know, I just sitting back and, and trying to prepare, you know, God has, has ministered and, and almost chastised and instructed me uh, personally um, in, in this. So um, I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to relieving that uh, with, with you all as well. Okay, so real quickly, um, relationships, as we've heard so many times this year, uh, is, is God ordained? You know, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, I'm sure we've had this uh, quoted uh, several times uh, this, this year, uh, where, you know, God said, it is not good for a man or a woman to be alone. I know we call this in, in the uh, context of a marital relationship, but I don't really think this is limited to, to the marital relationship. You know, God is saying it's not good for anybody to be alone. So relationship is, is God ordained. And in Genesis, um, again, I'm trying to uh, move quickly. In Genesis, you know, God, God said, you know, oh, let us, you know, and God was talking. He was saying, let us. And, and the us was referring to there, uh, as, as you know, is, you know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And God was speaking to a company of, of people, the, the trio, let us make man in our own image. So God was having a conversation and, and, and God in, in his infinite wisdom, by the structure that he has created, that we only prosper by relationships. We, we prosper by relationship. You know, God, when God wants to push us in a direction of, 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 of increase, of blessings, you know, it brings a dimension of relationship our way. You know, there's always a relationship. There's always, you know, a, a meeting point, either with God himself or, or with another uh, God-ordained uh, 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 human being. Uh, as it were. So God ordained relationship. God, you know, created my, men and women in his own image. So having a, a relationship of any kind, uh, be it a, a father-son relationship, a, a husband-wife relationship, um, sibling relationship, everyone you come in contact with was actually created in the image of God. So it's important. It's like two gods meeting and 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 having conversation and having you know some kind of communion as it were. And that is why it's important to God. And that is why we also must take relationship uh, very seriously. You know, regardless of the, the type of relationship we're talking about. I know we've talked about you know all sorts of different relationships this year. So relationships are important to God. In fact, we are created to relate. No man is an island to himself. God created us to, to form relationship and association with other people. You know, we talk about God of Abraham, God of Isaac, a generational God. God has, you know, proposed a people. You know, God talks about my people. So there has to be some interconnectivity with other people because that is the way God has ordained us 
you know. Um, and it's also important, you know, when I was trying to define relationship, you know, it's a, a way that two or more people are connected, they are affected, and they are influenced. So relationship brings about connectivity. And we've talked about, you know, connections and, you know, thank God for the uh, prayer prayer meeting last, last week as well, where we prayed, you know, for, you know, divine connection. So relationship brings people together, connectivity. Relationship also brings people in, you know, to affect one another and to influence one another. And that's essentially why God ordained relationship, so that we can affect and influence one another positively. The second point there is that relationships produce a blessing. So for example, a man and a woman come together, they produce an offspring. Any kind of relationship, as God has ordained it, should produce. You know, in Psalm 133 verse Three. Actually, I could have uh, put uh, chapter uh, verse one to three. The Bible is talking about how wonderful, how beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So the, the Bible is not just talking about, you know, uh, a relationship, but an harmonized relationship. How beautiful it is because he produces blessing. In that later part of that verse, it says, and for the Lord commands is blessing. You saw there's a blessing that come upon a united uh, relationship, as it were. So uh, God ordained relationship. God is using relationship to bless us, to move us forward. And we need to be conscious of this. Uh, and it's important that we have this fundamental understanding of why we have relationship. One, is God ordained, and two, God has ordained it because it should replicate uh, or produce uh, a blessing. It should produce an increase. It should produce uh, an enlargement. It should, it should move one forward. You know, the Bible says, you know, one will chase uh, 1,000, and two, as a result of their coming together, would have the capacity to produce more. So relationship is important because it's God-ordained and because it also produces uh, uh, blessings. If I move on really quickly uh, now to now begin to talk about, you know, any kind of relationship. Again, we've identified you could be in a, in a marital relationship, you could be in a, a friendship relationship, you could be in a communal relationship, in a community, and forming a relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. God is asking us here, you know, uh, uh, that we are faithful. And I think Pastor Afis uh, dwell uh, uh, a, a little bit about, uh, on this, you know, when he was talking about we are effectively responsible and accountable for our relationships. And this is where the two words come together. Um, God expects us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, it said, moreover, it is required for a steward to be found faithful. So a steward, like Pastor Fizzo was saying, was, is, is a servant. It is required that we must be faithful and accountable. You know, I use that word responsible because I just couldn't get that out of my mind from our men's uh, program. You know, Pastor was talking about responsibility. So God holds us responsible for every relationship that we find ourselves. From the cradle to the grave, God will bring men your way. God will bring women your way. You would have children, you would have aunties, you would have cousins, you would have all sorts of different relationships, uh, mentors, mentees, and so on and so forth. God is saying, for a steward, it is required that you are found faithful. In fact, in Luke 12, it says, and the Lord said, who then is a faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household? to give him a portion of meat in due season. Again, good stewardship almost elevates us. It turns us into ruler from, from, from a, a servant to a rulership. So if we understand the principles of God and then becoming good steward, the same way God gave a talent to one and uh, to uh, you know, five talents to somebody and they turn into 10. And it's like, oh, good and faithful servant you are promoted. 
So if we want promotion, if we want increase, we need to be good stewards of everything that God's given us. But in particular tonight, we are talking about our relationship. I want to use, um, and I'm coming to our main scripture uh, in a minute, but I was taking a good look at the story of Cain in Genesis chapter 4. You can read that story from 1 to 6. But in particular, in I think in, in, in verse uh, 5 there, then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother? The Lord said to Cain, where is your, your, so that's verse nine. Where is your brother? God is asking us tonight, where is your wife? Where is your husband? Where is your first child? Where is your second child? Where is your friend? And by the way, you know, the Bible is not talking about a location here. The Bible is talking about what is the state of your friendship? What is the state of your friend? What is the state of your children? What is the state of the people that God has, has you know, put in your, in your care? You could be the head of the department. You could be the head of your home. You could be the mother of your home. What is, where is your brother? Where is your sister? Where is your uncle? What is their state? Are you taking ownership of their welfare, well-being, both spiritual and otherwise? Because that is who we are. God is holding us accountable. God is holding us responsible for all the relationship that he has blessed us with. Relationship is a gift. God will bring men and women your way. And we cannot afford to underestimate any relationship at all. Where is that man that has sent you? Just while you were sitting at the bus stop, you know, I, I sent a man to you. He just said hello. But because you were so busy and, and you know, in another space, you ignore them. You know, the Bible was talking about, you know, men entertaining angels without realizing it, without knowing it. And I remember the story of Abraham. He just saw a few men standing afar off and he, he ran to them. You know, he, you know he, 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 he was like, oh, please come in. I would entertain you. I would provide you with, with some, 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 some comfort and food. Are you tired? He saw them as strangers. He saw them as people that were traveling, but they were angels sent to him. Again, the question tonight is, where is your brother? Where is your sister? And God is challenging us. Uh, can we give account of our children? Can we give account of our husbands, of our wives? Can we give account of every relationship that God has blessed your way? Don't understand, underestimate your wife. Don't underestimate your husband. God sent them your way. What is their state? Where is your brother? And I'm going to come back to the story of, of Cain in a little while, but um, I just really want to jump because of time into cultivating those healthy relationships and, and beginning to develop them and, and begin to, 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 again, be as it were, become accountable for them. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to, 12 to 14, the Bible says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy, dearly loved. It says, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You know, this verse of the scripture is, is loaded and talks a lot about, you know, how to cultivate our relationship and how to be, become more uh, 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 into our relationships as, as it were. So again, I'll just take it slow and we'll we break this down a, a little bit. So cultivating our relationship, number one is our identity. Pastor Peter did a wonderful job uh, you know, on this on Sunday. So please go on the YouTube uh, page and, and, and get that. I think he, the, the title is you know, who, who we are, our identity. 
and every relationship we are engaged in becomes fruitful and prosperous by first understanding our own identity. Who are we? Our relationship with God, our relationship with ourselves. We cannot love other people. We cannot relate very well with other people if our relationship with God is, is, is not up to scratch. You know, especially love, you know, right was saying, how can you love the God that, that you, you, you say you cannot see when you don't love your, 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 your neighbor. So loving God, walking with God, relating with God, fixing our relationship with God is an important foundation for the different relationships we have in our lives. Many dysfunctional relationships is as a result of identity crisis where people are, are, are not too sure about their place in God, are not too sure about even themselves as well. You know, not least, you can't love other people if you do not love yourself. So it's important that we sort out our identity. We begin to, again, seek God as a word. You know, Pastor Moses was talking about the word of God. Begin to take the word of God as a mirror. Begin to understand who we are in God. In that first Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 9, it says that you are a chosen generation, royal priesthood. That's who we are. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him that has called us. And the reason why we starting with our identity, uh, if I just back up one slide, is that scripture. It said, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, before we talk about having compassion and being kind to others, God's chosen people, that's who we are. Holy and dearly beloved, God loving us passionately. And we having this understanding helps us to then build on that to work with other people, our relationship with God. We must understand that we are a true reflection, a copy of God, a resemblance of God. And you know, life sometimes make us feel otherwise. You know, it's always important that we understand and accept the truth of who we are in God. It's not dependent on how we feel. It's not, um, you, you know, by what we've accomplished and who, what we have not accomplished. So by the time we start interacting with other people, we are fully assured of who we are in God and building on that and having an understanding and loving ourselves for ourselves and for who God has made us as well. We don't have any iota of of. of of, of you know, self-doubt because we know who we are. And so we can freely relate to other people. And of course, the second one in cultivating um, a healthy relationship is love. And you know, God is love. It's impossible to have healthy relationship if it's not based on the love of God, the agape love of God. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 14, it said, but above all things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Put on love, wear it everywhere you go, in all of your relationship, in your husband to wife, love. And you know, the kind of love that we're talking about is not the, just the love of, of feeling, how I feel. Okay, I feel loved, so I'm going to love my wife. I feel loved, so I'm going to love my husband. No, it's the love of God. It's a decision that we make in every of our relationship that we choose to love our friends our brothers, our sisters, we choose love. The reason why it's a decision and it's not based on feeling is summer, winter, autumn, any weather, we love. We stay in that place of love, even in adversity, even when things are wrong, even when things are not going to plan, we stay in the place of love. 
we love passionately. We love unrepentantly. Again, not depending on how we feel. So it's important that we love and, 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 and ensure that love is, is in any and every of our relationships. Amen. Because of time, I'll move on uh, quite quickly. Um, the next ingredient, if you like, of cultivating healthy relationships is generosity. We must be givers, not takers. In Galatians chapter 6, uh, and I'll, I'll read just 7 and 9, it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man or a woman sows, the same they would reap. And I love verse, verse uh, 9. It said, and let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not give up or relent. We shall take benefit if we do not lose heart. So it's important that we give of our time, give attention, give resources, gift. And you know, this, this actually follows on from the previous point of love. The way God showed his love to us as his children is because he gave. So we cannot prosper, we cannot uh, 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 cultivate good relationships if we do not know how to give. It's almost the custom in the world to take, 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 but we must ensure that we are givers. You cannot tell me you love your wife. You must give gifts, practical gifts. Give your time, give your attention. There's no way you're gonna have cordial, successful relationships without being a giver. That has to be, you know, I mean, I, I can't even overemphasize this. We need to start putting our money where our mouth is. Give. You know, there's, there's a brother, I'm sure he's online. I uh, will try not to mention names, um, but he's always challenged me because I just saw the way he gives his time to, to other people. Oh, let's go and have coffee. Oh, let's go and do this. Oh, let's go. And I'm like... God help, God, God bless you. <laughs> so we must give time. See, relationships are streams of income that, would, that we can literally live off for the rest of our lives, but we must deposit, we must, you know, sow into those relationships. We must invest in our relationships. We must you know, if we do not sow into quality relationship, you know, what you're giving is what you get out. A lot of people try to, to, to reap where they have not sown. I remember some people say, oh, no, I don't have friends. Oh, I'm not uh, this. But the Bible is clearly instructors for you to, to make friends. You yourself must show yourself friendly. So we need to start sowing the seed of friendship, start sowing the seed of, 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 of positive relationships. And if God's word were to be true, he said, we would reap in due season. Do not grow weary in that marital relationship. Keep giving. It may not be giving you what you, what you want back. Keep sowing into that relationship. Keep sowing. Keep cultivating, keep investing your time and your resources. And the Bible says you would reap in due season. Amen. The next one, I'll quickly go because of time, is forgiveness. And, you know, again, this follow on from love. These are all components, you know, of love in terms of patience and, and forgiveness. And, you know, I love this scripture because God is, is saying how important this is. For you to cultivate healthy relationship, you must be a forgiving person, regardless of what relationship it is. Because every man, every woman, at some point would require your forgiveness. We are all human. 
there will be some comment that they said wrong or something that they did wrong. And for us to lead successfully good relationships, we must forgive one another. In Matthew 5, it says if you're trying to pray or you're trying to go on a 40 days fast and um, all of a sudden you remember that somebody <laughs> has something against you, he said, no, leave your prayer and fasting to one side. Go back, go and reconcile. The God, God has called us into that ministry of reconciliation. And we need to take that seriously and be the bridge builder in all of our relationship. Again, very close to sowing the seed of, of positive relationship, becoming the reconciliation of the brethren and then our gift we can go back to our prayer and fasting we can go back to all of our spiritual activities but the bedrock of this is that we must forgive we must reconcile pastor peter talked about this you know and you know he was saying something around that forgiveness is not just you know your benevolence to others it's not just that you know but it's also it, for you it equally benefits you. You cannot afford to allow anyone to live rent free in your mind, in your emotions, in your, you know, full of anger and bitterness. That would not lead to healthy relationship. In fact, it has the potential to affect other relationships. Unforgiveness corrupts the God nature in us. Because God is a God that loves and, 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 and let go. And we must embrace that. The Bible says uh, 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 that we, as we forgive, in that last prayer, as we forgive those who sin against us, then our Father in heaven would also forgive us. So it's important as God's children that we walk in forgiveness, especially in cultivating healthy relationships. Amen. Communication is, is, is a big one. And again, we can spend so much time on this. In order to have successful relationship with your children, with your spouses, with your friends, communication is key. And I love what Colossians chapter four, verse six says. It said, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt and maggi and all those things that you may know how you ought to answer each and every one. Our speech must be seasoned with grace. Our speech must be seasoned with salt. We must communicate with life. We must communicate positively. You know, it's part of nurturing your, 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 your relationships. Regardless of the type of relationship we're talking about now, communication is key for your relationship to grow in its good communication. Whether it's a work relationship, we're home relationship, family relationship, it is essential that we communicate with grace, transparency. You know, in, in the circular world, you know, communication is, 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 a, is a department on its own. And I remember when we were going through uh, marital counseling as well, you know, communicate. And if verbal communication is not sufficient, do written communications. We must communicate and we must encourage our, our, ourselves and our other partners in this to, to communicate. The next point there is we must stay positive. Um, so th this is, you know, we must manage our emotions. In any relationship we find ourselves, marital relationship, uh, family relationship, work relationship, it's important that we manage our emotions, our feelings. You know, feelings are, are, are temporal. Feelings are, are transient. And it's important that, that we manage it. You know, going back to my story of, of Cain, I'm not sure I've got the time to, to delve into it, but 
you know, one of the key things that God said to, to Cain was, why are you angry? Again, take your time to read the story. You know, Cain brought an offering. Uh, Abel brought an offering. Something happened. The Bible says God had respect to the offering of Cain. God had, you know, res uh, God had respect for the offering of Abel, and he did not respect the offering of Cain. Things happen in life, right? And all of a sudden, Cain became really angry. And God said to him, why are you angry? Why are you, why is your countenance fallen? He said, if you do well, would you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, he said, you know, for me, this was really interesting. He said, why are you angry? <laughs> Sin lies at your door. And the desire for it is to rule over you. So this is before Cain actually went eventually and killed his brother. God had already gone ahead and, and warned him to say, Mr. Man, why are you angry? Why have you got these negative emotions? And why, don't let it overcome you. Don't let it, you know, don't let it rule over you. Eventually, the negative emotion was actually the downfall of Cain. Do not make life-changing decisions as a result of feelings and emotions. It's okay to feel it. It's okay to, to, to feel a bit upset about situation, but they are temporal. They are transient. Allow it to, to die down. I have that personal policy. I don't make any concrete decision if I'm emotional. It says, if you're not careful, sin lies at your door. In fact, the Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. It's almost like Bible recognizing that we have emotions. It's okay to, to, to have some of these emotions, but do not sin. When we're hungry, when we're full of emotions, we, our decisions, our judgments are not at its best. And we cannot stay in that place of negative emotion. We must move quickly away from that into purpose and into our identity. So in any of our relationships, husband, wife, uh, father, son, mother, daughter, friendship, manage your emotions, stay positive. And that's how to build and cultivate healthy relationships. I really want to encourage us tonight, you know, as I begin to, you know, run out of time. You know, why we are, you know, you know, there, there are many other things, you know, the Bible talks about being patient in, in our relationships, you know, being, you know, and here, I, I, you know, there's, you know, while I was just studying that story of Cain, God brought correction to him. God was trying to help him out here. God saw everything that was going on and was saying, why are you angry? You know, this is almost God intervention. You know, one of my other points on the other slide, because of time, is, you know, we must stay in the place of, of correction. We must be able to hear and give correction in our relationships, the two way. It's not about being judgmental but it's, it's about correction. So in all of our relationship, we must ensure that we, we provide good you know, feedbacks, good or bad. And the Bible instructed us on how to do that, that you know, if a brother is you know, taken in a, in a fault, you know, we that spiritual with humility, knowing fully well that each and every one of us is susceptible to that, we must do it with humility. And it's important for us to be able to receive, you know, correction as well. This day and age is difficult to give correction because, you know, we say, oh, don't judge me. No, even the, 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 the son that, the Bible says that the son that God loves, he corrects. And Pastor was talking about, you know, John 15, ages ago, that, you know, even the fruitful tree, he prunes, he corrects. 
and we must open ourselves to real relationship, not just relationship that will flatter us all the time. Oh, you're doing great. No, no, that's not what healthy relationship is about. It must be about correction that brings increase, that brings productivity. And we need to open up ourselves and stay positive regardless of when, even when we're being corrected as well. And just to round up, I would, uh, you know, just summarize by going back to that scripture that we started with, that we are God's chosen people, God's only nation, God's, you know, that, that loves us passionately. We must clothe ourselves with compassion. We must be kind to one another, including strangers. And we must stay humble. We must be gentle. We must be patient with one another. And by so doing, we are accounting. We are being, you know, not just blessed, but we are blessing our relationship. We are able to, to, to steward and to be accountable and responsible for our relationship. Amen. So I'll, I'll just stop there uh, for, for today. Um, I, I'm wondering, uh, because of time, if we've got any questions um, at all, um, probably. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Minister Zach. We actually have three questions here. Do we have time for all three? Uh, yes, uh, we can. Okay. We can do it. So the first question reads, in relationship and stewardship, when do we stop taking responsibility for irresponsible friends or family? So in, in relationship? Yes, in relationship and stewardship. When do we stop taking responsibility for irresponsible friends or family? Okay, that, that's a very, very good question. Uh, because uh, as it were, it feels like we are forever responsible for everybody, right? Um, so we, we, when you have irresponsible uh, our friends and uh, people that, and again, the Bible is, is very clear, especially when it's um, a, a, a certain types of relationship. So friendship relationship, for example, in Psalm 1 verse 1, it says, blessed is the man that does not sit in the seat of sinners. So if we have friends and and you know, uh, acquaintances that are on the wrong side. We know in the first instance, there's there's a clear line that, you know, we don't, you know, we, we can't take responsibility for their sin. We can't partake in their ungodliness. Um, but in terms of close friendship, you know, people that go into, into error and, and, and all sorts, we, we can take responsibility in the first instance by praying for them. And, 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 you know, encouraging them to change, spouse, be it our spouse, be it our, our uncles, our aunties, our, our children, even, you know, we pray for them. Um, and we go as far as never to give up on them. Uh, so our responsibility is to pray. It's God that would change. It's God that would transform. We will we'll pray, we encourage and do our best. But once we've done all of that, you know, again, like we, we keep doing, we love them. And that is where it stops. We keep loving them, but we cannot literally or physically drag them into the right, right? We have to trust that God would, would you know, impact them and, and change them. So we cannot, you know, almost carry it as a burden on ourselves. And we need to be careful that we are not um, uh, getting drawn into especially negative friendship, uh, relationship that and almost irrecoverable, or maybe someone, for example, could have a uh, you know a boyfriend, and they feel like, oh, you know, if they are not changing, pray for them, but you know where to draw the line, and it's important to be able to do so. Thank you, thank you. Um, the next question reads: I may know who I am, but can I have a healthy relationship with people who have an identity crisis? Absolutely, and this is where you know again. God has not just called us to, to love those who are, are wonderful and who have it all together. At some point in our lives, uh, we all go through different challenges and, and things that, that, that brings, uh, that, that causes us to, to question 
our identity. And maybe one of the key things we must recognize as well, before I actually answer the question, that you know, so sometimes the devil will come and whisper into your ears and, and, and cause some kind of doubt in what you thought you knew before. So it, it's, it's, it's not, um, you know, I just want to break that, uh, that, you know, we are all good all the time and we all know who we are, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But sometimes, you know, we go through challenges. And the reason why you have that brother or that sister in your life is to be able to help you through those challenges and, and be able to stand with you in prayer and, and encourage you and be friends with you to, as it were, show you who you are in God. And that is the role, first and foremost, of any brother on or any sister. And the Bible talks so much about, you know, encouraging one another. The Bible says exalting one another, you know, as the day passes. So that is our ministry of reconciliation and bringing people back and showing people that, you know, this is what you actually represent. This is who you are in God. And so we cannot relent. It's our responsibility to, to, to show them and to support anyone that is having any form of identity crisis. And, and with that spirit of humility as well, knowing fully well that, you know, we are all trusting God. We are all, you know, as it were, you know, holding each other's hands and, and standing. So my answer to that is yes, it's possible for you to influence. Don't forget the definition of relationship that we said at, at the beginning is, is, you know, two people coming together to affect and influence each other, you know, and that, that's, that's what God has called us essentially, to be the salt of the earth, to, to bring a word in season, a word of encouragement, a word of, of healing and restoration. And, and, and we, we need to um, be able to hold each other's hands and help ourselves to, to have the right identity. Thank you. And the final question reads, is it good, is it good stewardship to forgive but walk away from toxic friendships? Absolutely. Uh, the Bible says that evil communications uh, corrupt good manners. Um, so if it's getting toxic, um, forgive, but yes, know where to draw the line, uh, especially the relationships, uh, especially friendship relationships that you cannot salvage. And in engaging those relationships, they eventually weigh you down. Um, and where, this is where you must exit those toxic relationships. Of course, if you're married, uh, the Bible says the two shall come together and they shall become one, because it's important that we emphasize that this is where we then need to seek counsel, uh, because effectively in the eyes of God, God don't see two people, God see one person, right? And we need to then be able to walk through those, those internal, as I see it, internal issues, uh, with counsel, with prayer uh, from God. But if it's uh, just a friendship, two people relationship, please don't stay in it. If it's toxic, if it's it's going to infect you, uh, yes, forgive them, but uh, move on. Thank you. That was, that was all. Thank you. Thank you Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, and I would just uh, like to, again, just reiterate that God is a God of, of relationships. And we owe it to God uh, to, to be accountable and be responsible for all of our relationship. And, and before we pray, I just want us to, um, uh, you know, one of the items that we talked about is uh, we must be generous. We are in a relationship with God. And thank you, Dickin, for putting in the uh, offering details. Um, you know, we need to be givers. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Uh, again, the question is, if your relationship with God, it should not be difficult for you to be able to give, to, 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 to part with your, 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 your resources onto God. And I would just like to encourage you tonight, uh, the offering details are there, the account numbers and the, post, uh, the soft code. And even if you want to do uh, telephone banking, uh, we've got a telephone number. We encourage you to give unto the Lord um, and, and, and be generous uh, to, to the cause of God. Of course, you know, you know, your money is going, you know, straight to other relationships in Africa, across the world, uh, even in the UK as well, to be a blessing. And it's, for me, giving is probably the cheapest way uh, to form relationships that you normally would not even form because your money is encouraging and blessing somebody else 
you know, in, in, in you know, in different parts of, of the world. And uh, may God bless you as you give. I just want us to spend uh, the last minute or so that we have to, to thank God for the word that we've heard tonight. I just want us to begin to appreciate the, the goodness of God in, in our relationship, regardless of the state of our relationship. I want us to thank God for the, the people that God has put in our lives. Thank God for your wife. Thank God for your husband. Thank God for your children, regardless of the status. And just begin to trust him. And we, 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 we trust God that God would help us to cultivate a very healthy relationship. Father, we thank you, oh God, for grace tonight to, to, to start from that place of identity where we know ourselves and we know who we are in you. Lord, where we begin to then love one another, where we begin to show love to other people. Lord, we thank you, God, that we will not be like Cain, oh God, that we would not allow our emotions, our you know negative feelings to overcome us, oh God. But Lord, we receive grace to be to to take instruction and to take correction from you tonight, to begin to walk away from those negative emotions, oh God, and begin to make positive movements towards communication, towards you know giving and 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 and, and serving other people, oh God. Lord, we thank you for your grace, oh God, upon us, oh God, even as we begin to, you know, proceed and progress in a season of transformation, uh, transition. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you will do a new work in our relationship, oh God. We receive grace, your, your grace over each and every of our relationships, oh God, in our marital and, and, and home relationships, oh God, in our friendship relationships, in our business relationships, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you will pour your oil of, of harmony, of love into our relationships tonight. We give you praise, oh God. We give you thanks, oh God, that as a result of tonight, we would have testimonies, oh God, of positive relationship. We bless your holy name. We give you praise tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen.